Hey guys, Uncle Jesse here. I wanted to make a quick video explaining how to get started in 3D printing. I actually get a lot of comments on what do I need to actually 3D print my own replica props or whatever it is that you might want to recreate or print yourself. So obviously you're going to need a printer, a 3D printer, and there are numerous, numerous options that you can go with. I personally love the CR10. I also have a BQ Wit box that I've been using for a very long time now that I love. I also have a MakerBot Mini. I would avoid the MakerBots for the most part. <laughs> They're very expensive and the quality on them is not as great as you might get from some of the other printers. There's obviously just a ton of other options and obviously check out a lot of the other YouTubers that are doing 3D printing to get some tips on which machines you should go for. But outside of that, I figured it might be nice to just explain the process of actually printing something. You don't just download a file from the internet throw it on a on a SD card, throw it in your printer, and it magically prints for you. There is a little bit of work that you have to do in between that. So again, here's just a quick look at uh, just a print that I have going on right now. And if you're not familiar with 3D printing, here I'll just go over some of the, the setup of this as this is going on in printing. So in order to print, obviously, again, you need a 3D printer. And here we're looking at the CR10. If you're interested in the CR10, I've got links down in my description. Uh, so where you can pick that up for yourself. Love this machine and it's under, you know, about under 600, all depending on where you're getting it from. So you're also gonna need filament. That's the plastic that actually is extruded. It's sent through the printer and actually heated up and then printed line by line here uh, to give you the actual print that you're looking to get out of this. Also, you're gonna need some sort of a card, typically an SD card of some sort, to store the actual slicing information. And what I mean by slicing information is that's there's a there's multiple computer programs and software that explains to the 3D printer how exactly it should print the file that you're wanting to print. So that includes things like what temperature, what speed it should print at, what infill that determines how rigid the print's gonna be, how thick the walls might be, and as well as the actual quality, the print quality. You can either print in really fine detail or a little less fine detail. All of that accounts for how fast it will print. Typically, the 3D printing isn't exactly the fastest process in the world, depending if you're printing a large replica prop, it might take a day or two to actually print those things. But the actual software, there are a number of different options and I wanted to explain what some of those are. All right, so let's take a look at some of the software that you're gonna need for 3D printing. The one that I prefer is Simplify 3D. This is a software that allows you to, again, uh, slice your print files that you've downloaded, determine what the infill is gonna be, what kind of supports you're gonna use, how long it's gonna take to print is all dictated by this software. Software. This piece of software costs $150. I did not start out using this, but I have grown into using it after printing for probably the better part of a year using free software. I cut over to this one and I have not really looked back. The other that I use is Cura. This is made by the folks over at Ultimaker. If you have an Ultimaker 3D printer, obviously this is a no brainer, but this, this software works with basically all 3D printers that are out there. The one uh, thing that's great about this is that they are regularly updating it as well as it's free, which is huge, and that uh, if you have an Ultimaker, it will wirelessly connect the software to the printer, which is again, one of my favorite things if more printers supported it. So the other thing that you're gonna need is files to print with. I typically use sites like Thingiverse, My Mini Factory, Pin Shape, as well as Do 3D to actually obtain my files that I'm gonna go and print with. There are just a huge wealth of files that are available across these four. And again, there are numerous other sites that you can work with, as well as you can design your own using things like Autodesk Fusion 360, as well as a, probably a handful of other software options that are out there. So what I'm gonna do is just grab a file from my mini factory. I think I'm gonna grab the Death Trooper file here, and I'm gonna get that loaded into Simplify 3D. So here's the file loaded into Simplify 3D, and as you can see, it's put it on its back. So this is exactly why you can't exactly just take a file straight from the internet and load it directly on your printer. Not to mention that you don't have the, you know, all of your printer 
profile information directly loaded in it. One of the things that you will do as part of setting up either Cura or Simplify 3D is defining what printer you're working with. What's the build volume? What, does it have a heated bed or not? What are the temperatures that you want to work with in those? So I'm not going to go into details on all of those, but here in the settings section, again, I can have multiple profiles. So here's my Witbox, my Hephaestos, my, Ma uh, my MakerBot Mini. I have multiple profiles that I've created for the CR10 until I landed on my profile as well as the CR10 S4. So each of these will have a variety of different profile options that you can work with. And it's gonna allow you to dictate things like what's the layer height. That's really the quality at which it's gonna print. Is it really fine detail or is it less fine detail because I really just want a quicker print. And again, this all varies based on the machine that you're working with. For example, my BQ Wit box, I almost print everything at three millimeter layer height. And on my CR10, I almost print everything at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. Again, the lower you go, the higher quality. And again, that all depends on the type of printer that you're working with. You can also in things like determine things like the infill. So is it, uh, you know, super solid uh, or what type of infill pattern is it going to use? And I'll show you that here in just a second. Typically for my settings, I almost always print with an 8% or a 10% infill. And again, it all varies on the prop or object that I'm printing and working with. This allows you to also control things like the supports. So the files that actually, if you have overhangs, it'll actually help support the file printing so that it doesn't uh, fail basically when you're printing. And things like the temperature, the print speed, the fan speed, all of that can be managed through this. There is a ton of options. Highly recommend uh, Maker's Muse if you haven't seen his channel already. He goes in to, uh, like a ton of detail in Simplify 3D and options and tips and tricks there. So once this is loaded in, again, I have the option to come in here and I can now rotate this around. Because I don't want it to be on its back, maybe I want it to be upright and I'm going to print it this way and sure I'm going to print it with supports typically I might slice this as well uh, into multiple pieces depending on how I want to print it I might actually want to you know rescale this maybe I want it to be super large 200% larger and go ahead and print that that way for this just example I'm going to leave it as is and I'm going to hit the prepare print button and it's going to now take the information that's loaded into my profile, apply it to this part and come up with the slicing pattern, the print pattern that the 3D printer will use to actually print this. It'll also add in things like supports or rafts, all depending on those options that you decided to include or not include with this particular print. So here is the print preview. And again, here it's showing you all of the different support material. There's a little timeline option here. Both Cura and Simplify 3D allow you to view this timeline option. So here, if I t uh, rotate this around and zoom in a little bit here, you get a better view at that honeycomb infill that I was talking about. And that it's a 10% infill. So here you can see it's not super solid, but it's giving it enough structure that it's not going to sort of collapse in on itself. I don't have to worry about it dropping and it crumbling or anything like that. This timeline feature also allows you to see if there are going to be any issues with printing, uh, any areas that maybe that need supports that aren't getting supports and you can help define those. So this is just a, a way to double check how this is going to print before it actually prints. It also gives you an estimate of how long it's going to take and how much uh, filament or plastic you're going to use which is also pretty nice. This print time is also never quite right. So the next step on this is you can either print this directly over a USB cable to the printer, which I I don't think I've ever done, or save it to an SD card. And this is the option that I do. So I'm gonna save the actual file to the SD card, load it into the printer, fire up the printer and say print this file and it's uh, then just a waiting game for it to print. All right, so hopefully this was helpful for some of you out there that are interested in getting started with 3D printing and just have some basic questions on how this all works from not necessarily setting up the 3D printer, but how getting a file from the internet and loading it onto the printer and actually having it print for you, all of that works. And what some of the tools are that you need to do this. It's not just a 3D printer, you also need a computer to load the files, the slicing software, an SD card, and filament to get this all running. And that doesn't even include things like calibrating the 3D printer. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it was somewhat informative. If you're already a 3D printer, obviously you guys 
are well aware of all of this. But for anybody new, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. I just want to say thanks again for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support, all the comments that you guys provide. It's absolutely wonderful to receive those on a daily basis. I try to reply back to as many comments as I can. So keep them coming. Love you guys. And I will talk with you later. All right. Bye now.